in 1827, King Ludwig I of Bavaria established the Munich Institute of Glass Painting, which began a revival of the art of making stained glass. One of the great artists that arose eventually out of this renaissance was Franz Xavier Zettler from 1841-1916. Zettler established a company to make stained glass windows and he developed such a remarkable reputation that in 1882 his company was named by King Ludwig II, the grandson of the first Ludwig as the Royal Bavarian Art Institute for Stained Glass. Zettler and his company became famous throughout the whole world and their work was in great demand. The company was especially popular with Catholic churches because of their understanding of Christian iconography and the beauty of their designs. Their windows can be found in Catholic churches all throughout Europe, Canada, South America, Australia, and New Zealand, in addition to the hundreds of churches in the United States, and including our very own from St. John the Baptist, Johnsburg, St. Mary's, McHenry, and St. Patrick's in McHenry. Here you see we have a beautiful piece of stained glass of the presentation of Mary. By the way, her feast day is November 21st. Although Mary's childhood is not mentioned in any of the Gospels, her presentation at the temple is mentioned in the apocryphal book called the Pro Evangelicum of James. The feast celebrating this event dates very early, around the 6th century, beginning in the Eastern churches. Since our church here is dedicated to Mary, events of her life are depicted in the stained glass windows in this church. In this window, we see Mary's parents, St. Joachim and Anna, presenting their daughter to the high priest. Above them, in the circle, are lilies, the flower that represents purity and holiness. In this stained glass, we have Mary learning her prayers. In this window, we see St. Anna teaching St. Mary her prayers. From the fact that there are several books lying by the chair also demonstrates how Mary has also learned the law, the Torah, which was the principal means for the Jewish people to know and worship God. The law guided all aspects of life and placed one in the proper relationship with God. This is reinforced by the depiction of the Ten Commandments found at the top of this window. All this is to show that in Mary there can be found no fault or lack of virtue. At the bottom is a representation found in several of the windows, a representation of the temple with an urn of incense at the center. In the sanctuary of the old temple in Jerusalem, where God had his abode on earth, there was the altar of incense, and it was considered the Holy of Holies. This is here, of course, to show how Mary, who was the Theotokos, the bearer of the Son of God, was the very vessel of the Holy One himself. In our next window, entitled The Annunciation, that feast day is March 25th, this feast is one of the most celebrated in art. Placed on March 25th, nine months before Christmas, and of course marks the moment of Jesus' conception in the womb of Mary. All the traditional elements from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, are depicted here in the window. The Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove with the rays of light pouring over Mary. The Archangel Gabriel announcing the good news. The lilies representing Mary's purity and virginity and Mary's head bowed down in humble acceptance of God's will. In the bottom left corner 
is a rose, a long traditional symbol. In the book of Sirach, chapter 24, verse 14, wisdom states, I grew tall, like a rose of Jericho. The rose is usually painted with five petals to represent the five joys of Mary. These five joys begin with the Annunciation and include her maternity, the visitation with her cousin Elizabeth, the nativity, the birth of Christ, and her purification and presentation in the temple, the traditional rituals that Jewish women performed after giving birth. Another tradition describes the seven joys of Mary, which correspond to her seven sorrows. Either way, the rose symbolizes her great love for God and for her son. If you look very carefully, you can see in a window over Mary's desk in which there's flowers hanging on a tree. Here we are reminded that Mary is the new Eve who by following God's will overcomes the sin of our first parents and will be the instrument through who God will bloom.